Welcome back, my friends. I got a fun one for you today. I got a special package. It's from our friends at DIY AutoTune. And uh, you may know them as the providers of the ubiquitous Mega Squirt used on our platform for the Miata. And uh, today, we have a brand new ignition system. Let's take a look. This video was not sponsored, but thanks to DIY AutoTune for sending out a kit for my testing and review. Check the links in the description for info plus 10% off through October 5th. All right, let's review what we have. Up at the top, we've got our custom spark plug wires. They're specific links to work with where they're gonna be located on the bracket. We've got our hardware for the bracket. We've got this um, durable plate, which is going to mount all of our nice coal packs on top of the uh, valve cover for the car. And we've got four of these guys, as I mentioned. They are the IGN 1As. And if you look at the construction here, built in heat sink, weatherproof plugs. And you'll see in here, if you look very closely, this is a full metal sleeved. Um, uh, bolt down with there's like a slight ring around this which I think will help reduce vibrations it's pretty hard so it's not like rubber or anything like that but I think that that might be there to help reduce vibration next we've got the custom harness this is a 50 amp relay this is going to connect directly to the same power supply that the fuse box in the engine bay gets and it's going to take all that power and go out to our coils here. We've got associated powers and grounds. Then for our triggering system, we've got uh, these plugs, which will connect to your OEM harness for, again, any of these years, um, and will supply the trigger to our new harness. Now, the way this is all routed is that it'll look really clean in the engine bay. Um, this is an additional accessory that you can get for sequential ignition. So in this channel, we don't use just bro science. This number is bigger than this number, therefore it must be better. We actually look at what's going on underneath and why you'd want to upgrade your ignition system. Most gas engines produced in the last several decades use a spark plug and coil ignition system to ignite the fuel-air mixture. To do this, it needs to make an arc of electricity jump through the mixture, causing it to combust. But electricity likes to flow along wires, not jump a gap. And especially not a gap that's under extreme pressure, like in the cylinders of your car. In electrical terms, it needs to increase the potential so it can make that jump. Electrical potential is called volts. The coil transforms the normal 12 volt system in your car to something like 15,000 or 20,000 volts. This is called the breakdown phase, and when the potential is built sufficiently, a channel of plasma will lower impedance, causing the arc phase to begin across the electrodes of the spark plug. So to get across that gap, we need volts, and lots of them. Think of lightning in the sky. Electrical potential builds up in the clouds and eventually is able to jump all the way to the ground. The bigger the gap, or the higher the pressure, the more volts we need. Without those volts, we need to make the jump smaller, meaning less of a spark, which equals worse combustion. After the arc is made though, we need to fill that gap with energy. The more energy, the better it can start and maintain the combustion. The amount of energy we can jam into that little gap at the end of the plug is based on the coil technology and how much current can be supplied by the car's electrical system. What current, known as amps, can be supplied is based on the alternator battery, of course, but also by the wires themselves. Small wires can only handle so many amps, big wires can handle much more. Let's look at some common options and see how they stack up against the max marks. OEM coil packs will put out 15 to 25,000 volts and will utilize maybe 7 to 10 amps. This is putting around 10 to 30 millijoules into the cylinders. Not adequate for any sort of high performance application. You need to gap the plugs down to maybe 21 thousandths of, a, of an inch, um, which is less than half a millimeter, or even less as pressure increases. OEM packs can be pricey also. $250 for the packs plus plug wires. 
For DIY solutions, you've got some costs in terms of both time and money in building the harness and wires. There's a certain level of risk you need to accept. A problem with the wiring could be the difference of a misfire or starting a fire. Sometimes plug and play can be the way to go. First up, Toyota coil on plugs. These can put out 35 to 40,000 volts and around 25 to 35 millijoules of energy. This works for low boost applications and maintains a normal gap. Downside can be price, 50 to $100 per coil, and also reliability due to extreme heat. Coil and plugs sit right on the engine and get a lot of heat. Also, they're fragile in terms of dwell time. The longer you build up energy in the coil or the dwell, the hotter it becomes. Eventually, this will shorten the lifespan of the coil pack. You will need to be running a standalone ECU to keep the dwell time correct. The OEM ECU will push it too hard, leading to burnout within weeks. Since my test platform is running these now, we'll do some head-to-head -head testing today. Next are LS1 or LS2 coil packs. LS1 is probably not worth the effort. They put out more millijoules of energy into the cylinder, but they only run around 20 to 25,000 volts, whereas LS2 coils do 45,000 volts and put out about 50 millijoules of energy. Not bad, but you need to build a harness, wires, and bracket, which gets expensive and requires a standalone ECU so dwell can be configured. Let's take a look at the MaxSpark specs. The MaxSparks have a beefy gauge wire for power. It does not use the stock harness. It can handle 19 amps continuous. This means it will supply 81,000 volts and over 100 millijoules for each spark. This thing is an absolute beast and will handle all levels of power and mods that you desire. How often does this happen? First, you do some mods naturally aspirated with the OEM coils. This mostly works, but combustion is not optimum. Then you move to say, COPS, and you go turbo, which works until you need more boost. Then you buy again and go with LS2 coils, which gets you the boost you want, but it's limited by the stock wiring and maybe isn't optimum when you rebuild the engine with forged internals. Buy once, cry once, I always say. The Max Sparks will improve combustion at any power level, but will grow with you, supporting all the power upgrades you want to throw at your engine. I'm going to log a baseline with the Mega Squirt by warming up the car, turning off all fuel control, and making the fuel VE table rich in the cell at 2500 RPM. I'm going to hold this RPM for long enough to see the AFR that we get. Next, we'll repeat this test with the Max Sparks without changing anything. Fuel, air, temps, all will be the same. If the max sparks run leaner, will have proven better combustion. Let's get them installed. All right, so in the installation first step is of course, you're gonna want to get the battery disconnected. So, got that popped off. We'll pop off the negative first. Normally, that's sort of all I do, but since we're gonna be working with the fuse box in the engine bay completely, and bolting it I'm gonna just make it a little bit extra careful and remove the positive one as well all right so at this point we can start taking off the existing coils if you have a stock coil pack yours is going to be sitting over here which of course looks like this when it's undone so we've got to get these three bolts out we can get that removed and we'll pop off the two connectors that go right there and these are right there those two gray connectors and what I like to do is because they look very similar you can take a piece of tape and take the one that was going to your coil A um, which is the one in four uh, cylinders and just loop a blue tape around that there's a there's another way of determining which one is which. Um, coil B is the one with a brown wire with a yellow stripe, but I like to do it this way just because you're not 100% guaranteed that the wiring colors are gonna be the same on your car. Next, we're gonna be removing the four back valve cover bolts. This is gonna be the mounting position for the metal bracket. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And it's a good idea to loosen all of the bolts slightly. Uh, the reason for that is since you're removing a whole four of them at the back, we're going to be, it's going to cause some tweaking of the gasket 
uh, and so you want to loosen it in a regular pattern um, to avoid any compromising of the gasket and then also when you um, put it back together we're going to torque it all down in the correct order the other thing is for me uh, normally you wouldn't have to take out any of the middle ones but um, in my case I have to take these out completely as well because there's three in the middle that are, hold down this uh, bracket for the coil and plugs and so because of all that I'm going to go ahead and loosen all these up okay the four bolts are out and I've replaced the three middle ones and given them a, a bit of a torquing because the back two will not be terribly accessible so we're starting from there the the uh, torque spec for this is about 55 inch pounds inch pounds that's only about four and a half foot pounds so it's basically just barely snug then maybe a quarter of a turn at most I'm gonna grab our longer ones start laying them in these are gonna go in just like that they do need to be pressed down especially the ones in the back all the way make sure they engage fully so the two longer ones are there the two shorter ones are for three and four all right I'm gonna lay the uh, bracket on top of these so that the holes basically line up to where they're gonna go and you can work these into it uh, into these center holes one two three four and then these are gonna be able to wrap around here to each of the coil packs. Okay, now we're gonna get the spacers and long bolts. You got four of them, and the washer goes on them first. <laughs> bring out the itty bitty baby torque wrench you have an option of how you torque this down it can just be a kind of a star pattern the the normal way that the service manual says to do it is to basically start in the middle work your way this way and then go around the outside and then that provides even pressure all the way around All right, we're gonna start laying these in. We're not gonna bolt them down yet because you have to lay them in with this facing inside and the plug for uh, the trigger facing for the harness facing outwards. And these guys are difficult to slip on when they're not, or when they are bolted down. So you have to do that first. All right, so before bolting these down, um, we're gonna play with the harness here. And so this is a little bit fiddly to get all these wired neatly. I always like to wire things neatly. So I'm gonna grab coil three, the plug for coil three and the one for coil one. And I'm gonna get those um, are gonna be on the left side here. And what we need to do is feed this big relay underneath this line that goes to the brake booster and across and the hard line because once we do that it's going to come up here and it's going to bolt right there meanwhile these guys are going to be fed underneath the bracket to make it neat and out of the way it can be underneath the bracket come up here and come up here so let's do that Okay, let's 
before we do a final bolt down, we're checking that all the grounds can go to the right places. I decided to do mine right here on the back of the head. You can see in there, it goes right there. And then there's another one that's gonna lay right there. And then this guy is coming up around here. And we've got our main power junction right here, which is gonna go down and around into here. So let's get these bolted down and we'll tackle this side. All right, here's the driver's side ground as well. And we've got these guys all nice and bolted down. They have captive nuts on the other side, which is convenient, so you don't have to fiddle with all that kind of stuff. It's welded on. All right, so now we're gonna locate our main power lead here. And this guy, to make it nice and neat, can go under all this stuff, the AC lines, and it's gonna come out right over here. Make sure, again, that your battery is disconnected before messing with this guy. Some of the lines are live. So on the earlier cars, you're gonna be unbolting from this side. Uh, the later cars have some bolts on this side, but either way, you're gonna take this out and we're gonna get at a little area behind there. All right, so with this pulled back, you can kind of work this in there. Ideally, you'll be able to actually see your 50 amp fuse here um, as opposed to being down in the depths there should be enough slack for that once you get it on there it should be on the outside um, and then that way you know if something goes weird something pops then you'll be able to get to it without having to disassemble anything you can just pop off the rubber uh, connector uh, plug there I've got it that way um, depending on your car you may want to route it sort of between the windshield wiper reservoir and this bracket but it seems to work okay this way on mine so we're going to pop off this little 10 millimeter screw underneath here and put these together. All right, with a certain amount of fiddling, you will be able to get this in there. It is a tight fit and it's almost certain that you will not be able to close this door. So the instructions recommend that you tape this down, which we'll do. I think I'm going to tape it around the sides as well. And then we'll be able to slot this thing right back onto it's post like it's supposed to be. If you have a 90 through 93 model year, your next step is going to be very easy. There's going to be a ignition module right here. You're going to plug that uh, 6 or 8 pin uh, adapter into your uh, harness, which is going to go across and connect to these two plugs. There's only one way it can go. If you have a 94 and above, though, you have a harness that looks like this. This side is going to go to your uh, harness that went originally to your coil packs over here. And then these two are gonna go to the new wiring harness that goes to the Max Sparks. All right, so there's only one way to do these connectors. Now we move over to the coils. Now, as you recall, we marked coil A with um, some blue tape down in there. And then we've got coil B, which is uh, for cylinders two and three going to the other one, this one. And so you'll notice that this one has a, a brown wire, solid brown, and this one is marked with white. So white goes to solid brown, and that's for coil B, which is cylinder two and three. Make sense? White to brown wire, cylinder, coil B, um, two and three. Then this one, and you want to make sure, you'll notice there's a little tab on there. Make sure that tab is facing the right direction. You'll notice that there's a tab connector on the other side of the harness right there. So make sure the tab is facing like that towards that connector because they actually can be inserted if you push them hard enough the wrong way. <clears throat> so then we'll just grab this one and we'll connect, connect this up. And I don't know if I can do it one-handed. But I will try. There we go. And a little click of engagement. There we go. All right. Now, for now, we can just leave that like that for testing purposes. But later, we can zip tie this all nicely up in here, maybe, and be all set and tidy. All right. The next thing we're going to do is set up our ignition settings. 
come in here and set this to 3.0 nominal dwell. We can change this to 1.5. And we can also set this latency. If you have an earlier NA, then this can be set to 60 milliseconds or microseconds. And if it's a later, uh, you know, um, up to 2005, you can set this at like 99 through 2005, I believe, then you can set this to 100. You can do this with the car off. You can get this set up first and then send it to the uh, controller once you turn it on. Um, the second thing we need to do is our um, battery correction. And so this is in your manual. In this case, we're going to be changing this to 450. Oh, at 10, 122 at 12, and 100 at 14, and 86. One thing I neglected to mention on when comparing the uh, dwell um, for some of the other platforms that are commonly used on the Miata is that uh, this is has a nominal dwell of three milliseconds, but it will accept up to 9.5. That's a pretty significant range. Um, minimum is about 2.5, but uh, it'll accept anything within that range at the uh, kind of max load and max amperage. Um, you don't want to exceed that, but that is uh, a really big range, which means that this will work on the stock ECU. One of the downsides of the Toyota uh, coil on plugs is that if you run those those coils on the stock ECU, you will likely burn them out. The stock ECU is going to be putting out more like around, you know, five to six millisecond dwell, which is way too high for the Toyota cops. So unless you have some kind of dwell reducer circuit or an aftermarket ECU, uh, the Toyota cops are not for you. Um, they will burn out fairly quickly. You'll be replacing them constantly. It will be annoying. These will take the stock ECU or any kind of aftermarket ECU like we have, where we can change it to be whatever we need it to be for our application. All right. So in the car, switch back over to the cam view here. Let's uh, turn on to the first position. So that the ECU turns on, we will connect. It will tell me that things have changed. Can review that and looks good. We will send it. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right. Next step is to do that test. Let's try it out. Again, after warm up, all the settings and temps are the same as before. Once I get it up to 2500 RPM and stay there for a minute or so, the AFR stays steady at 13.3. Just for fun, we'll compare the spark from the Toyota Cops to the Max Sparks. These are the Cops from Toyota. And these are the Max Sparks. It's like a little lightning bolt, purple lightning. Well, there you have it. I think it's clear for quality of construction, pure power, and plug and play simplicity. This is a great kit. I'm convinced it will improve combustion at all power levels. Not only that, uh, I've noticed faster starts, uh, my idle is smoother, 
and I'm getting smoother pulls all the way to red line. Thanks again to DIY Autotune for sending out the kit and be sure to check the links in the description for info, all the specs, and a discount code for 10% off until October 5th. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.